So are you going to be asking questions? Or yeah, I'll be asking guys a few questions. <laughs> cool, yeah, I remember. Basically trying to get a conversation going. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. This is uh, kind of coming about having seen the web page, and mostly it's fairly up to the street about two years ago. But um, so here we go. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Just trying to get some more updated information. Stuff that uh, more like fans are looking for. Talk to a couple people at shows and like, whatnot. So you guys just got a studio about a month and a half ago, was it? No, actually, our last day at the studio was just uh, Monday. Just a few days oh, really? Ago. Four days ago. We finished up some uh, mixing. All we have to do for the record is uh, get the sequence right. Mm -hmm. And that's a toughie. That's a toughie. Get it mastered. Get it mastered. But this time around, we only recorded uh, 15 songs instead of uh, like last the last for the last record we recorded 26 songs. So the selection process was obviously almost impossible. And this time we only recorded 16. So there's only two songs or three songs in the end. But that's that even that's really difficult. So we like them all. Yeah. Right on. How would you compare this uh, this new album to say the best two pieces of work we've ever done? I'll say that. I think the second. I, I'll, I'll I'm more that. proud of it than, than any other record. Any other piece of it. It's a lot more groove, I think, on, this, on the third one. Easier going. It's adult. It's a little more adult. It's older it's an for adult sure. Project. Right. Kind of reaching a maturing process here or reaching further along on that. Something. Just something. I'm trying. <laughs> Is it that you're getting more comfortable with like the, maybe the studio process? Because you guys are definitely smoking live band. That that's probably has something to do with it. We it's took a different approach. We used to try to do make sure it was like, oh, we got to capture the live thing, because that's all we knew how to do mm -hmm. when we used to be in the studio. But this time we did it more of recording, you know, making a, a record. I don't know. We yeah, would say we took our time, you know, made sure the drums were good and then went over. Yeah, he really pushed us a lot. Yeah. And also I think we learned a lot of, and we made a lot of mistakes, especially on the last record, we feel like at least. And we learned from those mistakes instead of, you know, we did a lot of things differently that, that we learned from doing the last record. The last record was really rock. Every song, which, I mean, like I said, we recorded 26 songs and maybe like eight of those were mellow songs and we just cut all of those out. There's Isaac. Someone else buy some sunglasses there. Thank well. you, buddy. <laughs> and um, this album is much more mild. It's much more like... Uh, doesn't have as many rock songs. It's easier to sit down in the living room and listen to this record. That's what we wanted to do. It's a record, you know. Mm -hmm. You don't sit in your living room and like rock out. At least I don't. <laughs> Seems to be more consistent too the songs in general with each other. Then you can okay. listen to. I, I can. I'm still not tired of listening to. It. Whereas when we were out of the studio, the part time we were school, I didn't even want to hear it anymore at all. <laughs> not that I didn't like it, but this is something that I actually. Here. Yeah, there was a quote I found in an article on the internet. It said, uh, it's talking about part time of Ghostful, and it says, The entire effort is much tighter than the last two, two Black Crows albums, but for a major label debut, part timer is a bit cluttered by filler. Do you feel that at all? Or No, I mean, wouldn't say it was filler. I'd say that if anything, it was too much non filler. It was too complicated. It's too many things happening too quickly. You could never, never like, settle down into a groove. Which didn't even really represent the way we've always had some groove, but we just chose the songs poorly. I think. Mm -hmm. When you say the music is complicated, is that something that you intentionally create, or is it something that just kind of comes out of who you guys are? Just try, I think it's a it's a reaction to trying to not not sound like other bands and other music, and so you, everyone's got their own ways of doing that. We did that for a while, but we're just, we don't do that anymore. We've calmed down. Musically, I think, but we still can can get really loud and play really hard. But the, the songs themselves are much more like simple. And I think that's that's really it's important. Part of the maturing process. <laughs> Fine. You see, you see, we're calming down, getting a little better. You know, just <laughs> we're just really trying to have fun. Yeah. All right. Do you guys feel restricted by the studio at all? Oh, certainly not. I mean, this is the one, there's no rules, there's no principles, no restrictions to the studio at all. That's what's so nice. 
you can like, if you don't like the way your, your guitar sounds on a song, you just take it out and just do it on the piano. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> and then, you know, something like that. Or, or if you want, if you go, man, a trumpet would sure sound cool doing doing what that voice is doing there. So you get a trumpet, you put it in there. Just to do anything. You know? Speed things up. Oh man, I can't quite hit that note. It's too high. Let's slow the tape down so it's, so it's lower. I didn't do that. <laughs> I can sing really hard. <laughs> but some no. can do it. <laughs> right at the last. Should <laughs> <laughs> say it so. yeah. <coughs> um, I caught you guys show at the Casbah on Wednesday. Ah, and uh, the smoking show, I really enjoyed it. Um, one of the coolest things I liked about it is that you guys um, probably it's about forty percent of it. I really hadn't heard that much before. And probably only three to four songs you guys had recorded on, like was from your first two albums. Um, yeah, yeah. I think I think like I remember Stone Up the Road. Um, what else was? Oh, oh, was it Potrero Road? I'd heard Potrero. that for a while. We had, that we was had the first time we played, time played it in a year. A year. Really? We, we sound checked with it. I think I heard that a while back, but that's cool. I don't know. Do you guys? Obviously, you guys are trying to um, you're trying to focus on new material, get it out there. New albums coming out. But do you guys feel at any point you want to leave any of the old material behind? You see yourself leaving that? It's not or? a conscious thing. We've, we've, uh, that we that happens have. all the time. We have probably two dozen, three dozen songs that we don't even remember how to play anymore. That we couldn't play if we wanted to. Right. In fact, yeah, I mean, I, I could, I, I can't even think of them. You have the teleprompter <laughs> up there to. <laughs> The songs just kind of rotate in and out, you know, like, we'll, a good one will stay, it will stick, and yeah. one that might be sort of not quite so good just gets weeded out and forgotten and left. There's just a couple songs that like, we, we had, like, three years ago that I don't think the band was really ready to play yet, and, like, they've kind of come back now that we're a little bit better. They were, you know, they were kind of ahead of our time, you know? And there's, a, and there's even, like, a couple songs from, like, five years ago that just came back. And now, now we can just play really well. Like, Picture of Him is on the new album. But that's that a song like, that we never even played. Play, we live, played it. Yeah. Did we, we played it live a couple times. It's so it, sketchy. And that's like, that was like six, right when the band was getting together, like six years ago, five and a half years so ago. Happy. And then it, now it's like the best song on the album. Or one, you know, it's just yeah. a total masterpiece. Well, at least according to our producer. <laughs> what about Mother Hips? Yeah, that's what I was going to yeah, ask. What about the song Mother Hips? Is it going to be on the new album? Yeah. yeah. Yep, it's on there. Yeah. I know that song come before the name or the name before the song? The, song the name is, the song is what named the band. Yeah. That's one of the first songs, too, that I played. <clears throat> cool. I've only heard that one a couple times live, and I've tried to follow along with the lyrics. What, is, what does that the song talk about? Or what are... Oh, it just talks about courtship, <clears throat> courting young ladies. <laughs> <laughs> that's all. It's the only it's song that we recorded, actually, three times for each album, and recorded it for every record. Yeah. Now it's finally on numerous demos as well. And, oh yeah, you can demo. It's like it's like it represents our early days in Chico. The young innocent days. <clears throat> Not so innocent. Well, I was innocent. <laughs> but I still am too. Scary. Uh, I was talking to Mike on Wednesday and uh, this issue of money came up and he said we aren't in it for the money. Where uh, where do you guys see yourself going with all of this? I mean, obviously you enjoy and love creating music. Is there, a, is there a point where you feel like you will have accomplished whatever you, you set out to accomplish or is there a point that you might reach that you just want to call it quits? I mean how do you how do you see that unfolding? I, just, I look at it as <clears throat> as long as the band keeps growing musically that's like our success. I already consider us like really successful. And it just seems to me that there's like real no real end to that, you know, just as long as as long as like you get up on stage or you go in the studio and there's that spark, you know, and something new comes out like every time, then it's just worth you know, keeping it going. But if I guess if that spark went away then maybe it's time to reorganize <laughs> the crew. <laughs> Get like a new, a new thing going, but I, I don't know. That we've been doing it for about six years, and it still has that spark. I'd like to get into it for the money. Would you? 
Yeah. I'd like to make a bunch of money and then just get the fuck out and not have to worry about making money. I mean, playing music is, is always, always playing music. It's a, that's what we all do. It's, it's, I mean, it's no accident that it's our job. Right. But it sucks to have to always worry about it and to go, okay, well, this show, it's a, it's a shitty show, but, it, but we're getting a thousand bucks, so we just have to do it. And then it truly becomes a job. Whereas if you could, if we were just financially secure, then we could just play wherever we wanted to. We could play. We could record whenever we wanted to. There's just been so few times that we've been on stage and it just hasn't turned us on. Though. I mean, that's like. That's true. Like we've probably played I don't know, six, seven hundred shows at least. More than that. Over eight hundred. Okay, well, like bars. Four thousand bars. <laughs> okay, we have played ten thousand shows. All right. And I'd say like less than five of those truly sucked, and I just did not want to be on stage or even playing drums or anything. Five shows. with these guys. I mean, if I right. played a lot of other gigs with like a lot of other bands where I, I, I mean, the times I didn't want to be on stage, like totally outweighed. The time. <laughs> you played a couple of those shows by yourself. Oh yeah. The solo drum things. Yeah, that was drag. tough. I didn't even want to be on stage with myself. But it's good time. money. Yeah. Not to split up anymore. That whole snare drum show thing you were doing for a while was just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> me, 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 so me, much, yeah. Mike. I have yeah. the most experience of everyone in the band. So did you see Gene Smith came up on stage with us at the Cavs Bottom? The guy from Kai Cole? The, the guy who played the strat? Yeah. yeah. The Telecaster? Oh my gosh. Oh, that's right, the Telecaster. That it was just smoking. <laughs> And well, the best part is when you back off. He's like, yeah, I can't <laughs> like, touch this. Like, <laughs> Dude, his uh, smile was so great. He was just sitting there. He's just, you knew he was so great, man. It's just his smile. <laughs> that guy's a killer rock star. He was turned on. We got a Christmas card from star. him four days ago, actually. A Christmas card from him? Yeah. It was a little out. It's really early, actually. It's really early, but see, this is it there. Yeah. Gene Smith with Kai Cole. It says, Dear Tim, Greg, Isaac, Mike. How are you guys doing? Stop. I miss you guys a lot. Stop. Hope you've been thinking of me. Stop. Are you thinking of me in the shower? Stop. I can't wait to see you guys. Stop. Love you guys. Stop. Want to sit in and do This Is A Man. Stop. So he did. And then it says, the card actually says Peace On Earth because it's a Christmas card. And then basically you guys rock and are the coolest love gene. Something with you for <laughs> Christmas card. Right, is he down from San Diego area? Or? No, he's from yeah, Sacramento. Who's uh, just down the area? You know? they, they played. Oh, really? Yeah, they played. Nobody was there, unfortunately. So, so they were the first band that yeah. played before Dishwater? Yes. Oh, They're heavy duty. Wow. Did, uh, was Dan? On the album with you guys? Mm -hmm. well, this he plays on not nearly, on nearly every track, as a matter of fact. He played accordion on he the record. He never played accordion before. We, wow. we all thought he was great, because we never played it before. Yeah. Uh, and he played piano and electric piano and uh, Rhodes, on Rhodes and Wurlitzer, and a lot of organ. He was, he was good. How long is this next tour going for, I guess, in the break? We're coming back at the very end of June, and it's now. Uh, no. Uh, no, the very July. end of July. It's now. What's the date to? June seventh. June seventh. It's about a month and a half. Nineteen ninety-six. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You guys getting burned out of being on the road at all, or? We're ready to get back on because we've been in the studio for so long. Do you guys reach points where, I mean, you say you really enjoy being on the stage, but is it just the, the tediousness of road tripping and being on the road constantly? Is that where you yeah. down, or? Well, I think when, we, when it was time to get in the studio, we were all relieved at that point just to, because we've been going pretty, pretty hard. But that's, that's the nice thing about it. You can go and do, do what you have to do, whether it be the road or the tour. I mean, the road or the studio, and then, you know, you get, you get your fill of doing one or the other. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Studio, we were in there for two and a half months, so two months. Got, got ready, ready to get on the road. 
and we'll be on the road for two or three months and we're ready to take a break after that. How much of a break do you guys get a year? This year, we've had more breaks off the road than we've had it all together in like three it's years. because we finally got smart. Yeah. <laughs> well, we did like like years straight. We did the country like three times. We did like Six 300 months. shows Sick. in here. Wow. For like two years. How was the response on the East Coast? I know you guys were there for a little while. Massive out there. We all loved the East Coast, man. It was a good. We had a good response to it. But the, but I don't know how the East Coast responded to it. <laughs> if they would have seen the shows, they might have liked it. There's about 20 people who saw us on the East Coast. Oh really? <laughs> they were all no, 20 shows. Yeah. Like about 20 shows. Yeah. That's we had a half person. The thing is, show. is that there are places that we did pretty good. <coughs> Where? New York. Like Burlington, <coughs> Vermont. Like New York. You guys play uh, a CBG? Atlanta, Atlanta uh, New Orleans, Chicago, Portland, Maine. Yeah, Portland, Maine was really good. Chicago, Chicago was wasn't so hard. Crap. Detroit? Shut just, up, man. Just, just fucking dicks. Just shut up. Not to be so sweet. You're such a smart ass. What are you doing in here? Chicago sucked. <laughs> sucked. You said it. Fine. There you have it. No, Chicago was good. <laughs> no, just rubber said so. Oh yeah. That's because that's cause that one. No, no, no. We played three great shows in Chicago. I was there. Okay. <laughs> we'll take Mike's word on it. One of the bios on the uh, on the internet about the Mother Hips states that uh, you draw a lot from the reserves of American music and literature in your lyrics. Oh yeah. yes, of yes. course. Now, being on the road as much as you are, do you get much time to read at all? Or oh uh, yeah, we all um, we read constantly. And what, what do you think on like the road National Enquirer, that thing comes out about once a week. It's good really? American literature and uh, daily Reader's newspapers. Reader's Digest is pretty good too. Yeah, the uh, Adventures in Real Life on the, the Reader's Digest. You can get those those volumes of Reader's Digest. Of all of the adventures, the, more the drama in real life. Uh huh. We read the dictionary a lot. Oh really? Mm -hmm. Oh cool. We have a big old fat dictionary on the bus. Mm -hmm. um, no, we read a lot of. He's reading the, the uh, boatman's manual at that one place. It must have been pretty interesting. It was. I'm trying to figure out how to sail. But the 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 thing about that book was that there was all this language that I didn't understand. That's the dictionary. No, the no, that's when our bus was in the in the shop, and the dictionary was in the shop too. Oh, okay. Yeah. <coughs> Got it. Do you do you write much on the road as far as lyrics? Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, just as much as I would write anywhere else. Actually, usually more because we have so much time to kill. Um, when we're home, it's just a whirlwind of activity, and usually don't have time to sit down and write anything. Your mind is isn't very. Center. <laughs> That's very centered. It's not very uh, clear. You spend your time back in Chico pretty much just catching up with friends or just avoiding? Catching up with our friends, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, catch up we, we actually have spent very little time in our hometown for the last three years. Or at least, I mean, Mike, you've spent more than any of us. Yeah. But we, Greg and I have been hanging out in the Bay Area mostly. Chico is weird because Chico is a college town. And most of the people are only there for like six or seven years. <laughs> and uh, no, for like four years, and then the whole, the whole, like the whole student population just turns over. It's like transient. And since we, we didn't do that, we go back home now, and like most of our good friends are, are gone. And we usually see them somewhere else on the road, some, in some other state. But when we go home, it's kind of like, to me, it feels a little bit, it's like ghost. Something to drink for anybody? Ghost town. Beer, soda. Oh, yeah, whenever I see a hip show, it's like lots of Chico people. That comes every oh, shot, every man. Chico's been so the fine. reason that we got as far as we did, you know? It's, <laughs> it's like the support there's, there's, Chico is all across the United States. Like, we'll be anywhere. And then people will be all. So many across the Chico? Like, so Chico. today, just now at the bar. All. You guys from Chico? And we're all, yeah. Oh, yeah, I went there and I saw your band, you know? It's, yeah, I was sailing the other day out in San Diego, and I was I pulled the sailboat into the dock, and the guy the guy who was helping helping bring the boat in was all, "Hey man, are you from Chico?" 
Yeah, are you, are you, are you in a band? Yeah, the Mother Gibbs. And he started talking about he used to go to school in Chico. Everywhere you go, there's someone from Chico. And we owe so much to the residents, the one-time residents of that town. If it wasn't for Chico's, we wouldn't have been able to do it. Like we did, it would have been so much harder. The music was so protected there, you know, there's like no mm -hmm. competition and we could just totally do exactly what we wanted, play parties and play like five, six times a week sometimes, you know, to friends' houses and bars and everyone was so just open to whatever we wanted to do. That's cool. I've run into people from Chico just hiking like way up in the mountains. And I'm like, hey, you're another hips. Oh yeah, man, we used to party with them back in the day and all that stuff. It was a real strong following from there. Um, also, an American webpage says, for now, this is written I think in 93. It says, for now, the band still lives together in an old house in Chico, but the call of the wild may soon transplant the four. You see yourself leaving Chico, leaving the old house in Chico? Yeah, we definitely have to. We have to get out of our house because it's gonna—it's about to fall down. Yeah. <laughs> we, we partied at that house. Yeah, it's like yeah. loose. The whole thing is loose Party. from the ground. It like you can like <laughs> shove it. We it used to be further back on the lot. And we pushed it up because so people could see it easier. But eventually we had to move it back because it was too crazy. But um, it's it's housing bad. Houses probably didn't go with them. Um, they don't really care. But, but we gotta move out of that house for sure. It's bad. So you guys took in a, a mother and daughter, didn't you, at the house? We did, yeah. yeah. What's, what's the deal with that? And Kira, there was friends of ours. We knew Deanna. She was like a teenage girl who had grown up in Paradise near Chico. And she, she we met her just when we first started playing. She was like a really good friend. She was a big fan of the music. And um, a couple years later, she got pregnant. And she had no no meat, no spouse, and no job really. And we just said, well, why don't you come into our house? We need someone to look after our belongings while we're gone anyway. So she moved in for a while. The place was a mess too, and she cleaned it up really nice. That's cool. She still live with you guys? Or? She yeah. just moved out because she she was getting lonely. We were never home. She got kind of bluesy. Right. It wasn't very good environment for, for a kid. Raising a kid. Um, when you guys signed with American, I think American also mentions that there's this fierce bidding war and American won out. What was it? What that's, that's not true at all. Um, we had a lot of booze from the record labels. Yeah. We had a, we had a buzz. For that's a where while. I learned how to. That's they, where they I learned. Said, they said we had a buzz, so <laughs> I'll agree. We learned a lot about alcohol, good alcohol. And good food. We ate at a lot of fine restaurants, but we we only got one other offer, so it wasn't a bidding war at all. On that. I don't at least not from my understanding. Well, they certainly weren't bidding war. Is they never they never smoothed us. You know? Well, because we weren't looking for money, we got a, a huge offer from another label, and we just we didn't want to go that far into debt. You know, the record label gives you this money, and you have to pay it back eventually. So we just we weren't. A bidding war wouldn't have worked because we weren't looking for the highest bid by any means. We were looking for like the lowest bid, if anything, because we had enough money. We made money playing, playing live, and we were comfortable with our lifestyle, and we were making plenty of money. We had, we had no reason to get this huge advance that would only put us in debt. So we, we were just looking for artistic freedom. That's what I was like our, our only term that we really wanted to have, and we got it from there. So it's been working well for you. Yeah, it's been great. Cool. We've, we've done everything ourselves. We've chosen every, done every decision about the, the records and the music, where they're recorded, how and when, the, the artwork, everything. I mean, it's, it's really cool. It's a dream come true. We appreciate that too. It's cool. I took a friend to a, a show a while back. It was in Corona. I think like about ten people showed up. But, um, at that the internet, internet, at that heavy metal club? Mm hmm, exactly. That was you? Yeah. yeah. Nice. Had a lot longer hair then. Yeah. Um, but it was the first show he'd been to, and I wish it could have been another show. But he made a comment afterwards. He goes, It's almost like they don't want you to dance because they keep changing the tempo so much. <laughs> and you, I read a quote from you once that says, Who says songs have to have one groove? Is that, what's the intentionality behind it? Or is it just uh, we were just young. Out of it, or? Just young. We were just young. No, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I 
feel that way anymore. I mean, like like we were talking about our, our new record, mm -hmm. there's a it's a lot more like simple. The song, the song structure is usually more simple. It doesn't change as much because that's kind of spastic almost, you know. But dancing, dancing's great. I don't give a crap about playing dance music. You know, I, I don't dance at all. I can't dance a step. So the dancing has nothing to do with why I play music. But if people can dance to it, that's great. <coughs> I like to watch it. And they can. They can dance to the hell out of it. <clears throat> yeah, we, we, we like to put people to dance. We certainly don't, are not trying to make people not be able to dance by any means. We like it. Those songs are just hard to get, like, on the first time, you know, like, a lot of those songs that, like, have the tempo changes and, like, different parts, but, like, you know, if you come back three, four times, you're going to get it and be able to dance to it, because I've seen people go through some hard changes <laughs> with us. Yeah, I think first couple of shows, they got wind like, totally, guys. totally good. Yeah, some of this guy was spraying something one night. <laughs> because I, I just, like, I, I did that one change, like, too weird and just, like, messed him up. So it's like kind of, you know, people are there to dance a lot. Yeah, after yeah, about 10 or 12 like shows, I'm starting to be able to, you know, okay, I know there's a time change coming. All right, all right, prepare. And then, Once know, people get it and, like, people are able to dance to it, it just makes our shows go off 10 times what they could, you know, get the energy in the crowd going. It's just like a whole other experience. It's like, that's, that's you know, the high. The, that's, that's one of the most enjoyable things about your shows for me. I, mean, I spent three months in Central America last summer, and I just remember anticipating coming back and be able to go to another hip show. <laughs> it was like, you know, because you know, you had all the discotheques and stuff like that down there. I'm like, you know, this is cool, whatever. But in my first show, when I came back, I think it was at the Dana Point Brewing Company. Oh, man, it was just a smoking uh, yeah. show. I just had so much fun. It was like my homecoming, you know, for me. The Harbor Lights. Yeah. Jump that was cool. Yeah, it's a great what would, you, what would you guys be doing if you guys weren't in Mother Hips? You guys were all in college, didn't quite finish. In the music we didn't have time to go to school anymore. <coughs> I mean, being in a band pays a lot better than being a student. Totally. And it's a hell of a lot more fun. You don't have to wake up nearly as early. What were you studying? What were you guys planning to do? Greg and I were both English majors, but I don't think either of us were planning on being a teacher. I mean, I wasn't. I wanted to get the hell out of college. I wouldn't want to like finish college and then go back to college to be a teacher. I was just flailing around. Really what was your major? I was in recording arts. There's a couple classes I couldn't pass, a couple of electronics classes, so it wouldn't have worked out anyways. You were history, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. just in time. <laughs> that was definitely history. You were history, but you were studying <laughs> history, right? <laughs> <laughs> the moment I got to Chico, I knew I was history. <laughs> I learned a lot about, about writing, though, in college. We had, we had some cool teachers, man. And if I hadn't have been in those classes, I wouldn't have gotten nearly as turned on to words. I mean, I was really into writing before I ever went to college, but I just I spent a lot of time studying poetry, <coughs> figuring out what sucked and what didn't, what, what sounded good, and sort of like the difference between poetry and lyrics, things like that. Because I, I think I wanted to be a poet for a while. Now. That's absurd. Poets are weird people. It's a glutted market, too. Well, not only that, but it's not, no, one reads, no one reads poetry except other poets and students. So I, I, I wanted to, like, if I was going to spend my time writing words, I wanted to make sure I could reach a lot more people. And at a rock show, you can say some words that reach, like, a thousand people every night, or, or even 200 people every night, but, you know, poetry was never like that. It's, it's, I'm glad I did this instead. That's cool. Speaking of, of your lyrics, I had questions on, on two different songs. One, what's the significance of the figure 11? I haven't, I, is that come out of Black Elk Speaks? Or? Yeah, I never read the book, but I, uh, <coughs> but it did, yeah, it does. I've heard about it. What is the significance of Figure alone. He's, um, well, that actually, the, the rest of the words are like the Blackout Speaks thing. I read, I was, I was at Mono Lake up in the, on the eastern side of the Sierras, and they have this, this new visitor center up there, and they have this one plaque that's, that 
says something, like some quote, big long quote that Black Elk, from, taken from Black Elk Speaks. And I read that and I was pretty impressed and checked it out. Went home and wrote about that. But the figure 11, my brother and I used to be uh, house painters. And he's tall, like me, skinny. And people used to call us the figure 11 because they'd stand next to each other. <laughs> so I thought that was pretty funny. But then I actually adapted that into me something different. But you'd have to listen to the song to figure it out. I'm not going to explain. No problem. <laughs> um, that's what the song is. And then also in the, uh, the song, is it been lost once? Where uh, two miners walking up the road, is that referred to an actual event? Uh, that was, speaking of my brother, my brother had a dream one night when we were camping out in uh, Utah. He woke up one morning and just wrote those words down. It, he doesn't, I mean, he's never tried to like figure out what they mean. He was just, just describing his dream or something like that. That's all it is. <laughs> As a band, is there anything in particular you'd want to have, say, on an internet site? website, it's generally an information gathering thing. Is there anything in particular you'd want on that? Um, you'd want schedule the, the worldwide internet surfers to read about Mother Um Well, it's important to, I think the, the one good thing that you can have about the website is that give people a pretty accurate representation of the band because it's us talking rather than relying on like, some image that we may have acquired through other bands we've been playing with or just through what, what which people, which style of person comes to our show or something. You can, you can be really misrepresented by, by pe other people's uh, image of you. So I think it's cool that we can sit here and just Explain what kind, like say, what kind of music we like, or you know, just our sense of humor. And it can cut through all those perceptions and just give you like actually us, mm -hmm. which is important. So what kind of music do you like? I don't want to talk about it. Well, Greg, why don't you start this one? Just because I've been talking. About it. Um, well, what did we listen today to? I listened to, I listened to the, the Beach Boys, like the, the era after they got popular. Greg was listening to Derek and the Dominoes today. That's right, oh, I was is. listening to Derek and the Dominoes. Which is just like the second time I've ever listened to him. Really? Fine band. Yeah, fine band. Sounds a lot. It sounds a lot like Eric Clapton. It is. Yeah, that's what's <laughs> <beautiful. laughs> You guys have a fairly large collection of music you take with you on the road, or? That's shabby. We have like loose tapes, like, all over the place. We don't really have a stereo system in our bus. And also, yeah, it's just because the, the web is sort of, like, worldwide, and people can uh, get on it from anywhere and everything like that. A thing that you guys might want to utilize, because I'm a big fan, all you got to do is, like, send me a fax. Of like a story that you want to put up for the day. Say something funny happens on a show, or you guys love to show and you just want to tell about it or something. Yeah, that's a good You can idea. put that up and, and as regularly as you guys want to send me something, we can have an updated thing from the tips on the road. Uh, and even like you guys, can, you can throw in like, hey Susie, you know, like your outfit. You know, <laughs> whatever you want. We don't, we don't play that. <laughs> well, I mean, whatever, you know, <laughs> you could like, you could just throw up right. whatever yeah, no, you want to do. That's great. What time is it? Do you know? Five almost. Ten to five. New song or something. Yeah. Uh, okay. Put your own words Just out. Kind of keep that in mind. Yeah. That's fine. It might be kind of fun to like that way you can feel more in touch with the fans yeah. every day. And it's and it's like one announcement rather than having to like tell it over and over or whatever. There's some hey it's hey. And hopefully that I know about like taping and stuff. There's a whole lot of bootleg. Well, there's no, there's another guy with the yeah, side. Oh, is that? Um, I don't. That's all I had to say. Doesn't. <laughs> but you know, there are whether it's whether it's right or not. Shit, like tapes out there. So. 
And I know that there's people who discuss that over the internet. Mm-hmm. Totally. There's some smoking shows out there. Absolutely. That's about it. Oh, I was talking to my, I work with junior hires. And I uh-huh. told them what kind of was going to be doing this afternoon. And one of my students was dying to know. <laughs> his name's Brian Yagi, I'm supposed to say that. But I was wondering if you guys like to eat churros. I love churros. They are sweet and good. When's the last time I had a churro? Hot and good. Oh man, I love them. I don't think I've ever had one. Last really? one I had was at the yes. Marin County Fair in 1983. Yeah, that's fair. I had one at the, at the old at the old hometown fair, Manhattan Beach. Oh, maybe I had one when I went. You to had one with me, buddy. That's right. That was eighty. No, that was ninety one. Ninety one. Yeah, churros are really good. Maybe I had one once. I I'd say they're the best donut you know style food that is out there. Inside donut thing, long, like, oh, long, long with like ridges on it. Looks kind of like a cactus, oh, yeah. but totally. it's brown. Totally. I haven't had one. <laughs> All over in Mexico. <clears throat> yeah, I love them. Love them. Can't get enough of them. Cool deal. That's it for me. You guys. Don't start it yet, though. Every time that I try to win at some little game, there's someone there to push me down that makes me want to try. Still ring. 
expensive today I know that's where my girl went when my girl went away She calls me up if just call me down She calls me down But it's only sound Will come visit, there's no room for doubt. I try to stay calm, but sometimes I just can't help but shout. She turns me on and then she turns me down. She turns I feel the cloud, but it's only sound. How can they think I would sing out of sight like a bright summer Go quickly, and I ought to know. She runs me down, and then she runs me down. She says, Autumn. She says, Autumn. How can they see more than me in her eyes? I realize she's a prize.
way to these working man. Well, I keep my nose to the grindstone. I work hard every day. Might put a little pad on the weekends. After I draw my pay, I go back working. Come Monday morning, I'll drive right back with the crew. I drink my beer in the tap and sing a little bit of these working man. Sometimes I think about leaving, do a little bumming around. I'm gonna throw my bills out the window, take the train, go down the bathroom. Gotta buy my kid a brand new pair of shoes. I drink my beer in a tavern, a little bit of these working man. Songs of the working man.